One of the most common geologic inquiries that the survey receives is for the identification of meteorites. While it's not impossible to find a meteorite on Michigan soil, it is incredibly unlikely. All meteorites come from outer space and were once part of larger rocky or icy bodies like asteroids, comets, planetismals, or even planets, which have broken off and zipped around the solar system until eventually making their way to Earth. Most are hundreds of millions to billions of years old and hold key information to the birth of our solar system and their composition. Only 12 meteorite landings have been confirmed in Michigan's recorded history since 1883, with the biggest being 114 pounds, down to the smallest being only one-tenth of a pound. With that rarity, this makes meteorites much rarer than gold or diamonds. While Michigan is no stranger to a history of meteorite falls on the state's soil, there are many instances of finding confusing common rock material as meteorites, thus it is essential to know what to look for to distinguish your meteorites from your meteor wrongs. Your first instinct, like many others, is to photograph your findings and email pictures. While some outward characteristics can be identified, not even the experts can confirm a meteorite from a simple picture. For example, pause this video and take a few seconds and comment down below which ones you think are meteorites and which ones are regular earth rocks. How did you do? In pretty much every case, a meteorite can only be truly determined by lab analysis. You may have noticed, some of those previous meteorites look distinct from each other. This is because meteorites can either be metallic or stony, and sometimes a mix between. Metallic meteorites are always made of iron and will look and feel like it. Stony meteorites, also called chondrites, are made of lighter silicate material and will appear less obviously like a space rock. Because many known meteorites are metallic, many inquiries involving meteorite identification come from iron-bearing samples. In many cases, the first test is to check for magnetism, as almost all meteorites are magnetic. However, this also leads people to assume that human altered metallic content, such as slag, which is a byproduct of industrial plants around the state, are meteorites. Slag is one of the most frequently confused and inquired about samples that people believe to be meteorites. In order to accurately differentiate a piece of slag from a meteorite, the two best things are to check the weight and the texture of the specimen. Textural differences come about primarily from the way the piece will cool itself from its molten state. Slag, while being produced, will have an entire molten body. During cooling, this will cause the iron to form bubbles throughout its body, leaving the slag with many air pockets called vesicles. Meteors, however, although mostly iron, come from the freezing vacuum of space and only reheat during entry into the atmosphere. Heating causes bubbles to form also, but only on the molten surface of the meteorite, which when popped, leave a distinct dimple-like bowl called a regmaglypt. Because metallic meteorites do not form vesicles like slag does and are iron throughout, they will almost always be heavier and denser than slag is. Iron concretions, which are a common globule of metals found across clay bodies in Michigan, have also been confused as meteorites. These form as a result of iron-heavy sediment layers like clay, concentrating iron into spheroidal chunks over time. Commonly when broken, their interiors may look like tree rings or the layers of a jawbreaker. When finding metallic rocks, any indication of silicate minerals like quartz or carbonates, which are very common in Michigan's glacial surface, are a dead giveaway that it is not a meteorite. Five of the 12 meteorites found in Michigan's history have been stony chondrite meteorites. These are not as commonly confused, but also are harder to differentiate from a normal rock. While stony meteorites generally still have iron in them, they are mostly composed of silicate minerals. Some will look more stony as the name suggests, such as the Allegan meteorite, but some will also appear metallic on the outside. A common distinct feature of stony meteorites is an outer glass-like texture called a fusion crust. Fusion crust forms as the meteorite enters the atmosphere and melts the silicate and iron outer surface, leaving it with a shiny appearance. Sometimes, while the crust is still molten, flow lines will form on entry, leaving a very distinct texture with many ridges. Because of fusion crust's glass-like qualities, it commonly has contraction cracks which form as a molten glass-like layer cools down. As the meteorite weathers on the surface over many years, these pieces can flake off, exposing the stony body underneath. Your specimen can be checked for fusion crust by simply seeing its thickness and underlying material. Fusion crust is generally never more than a couple millimeters thick, and its underlying material is almost always a lighter color. In addition, quartz is the most common silicate mineral in Earth's crust, and even though many stony meteorites contain silicates, quartz is not found outside of Earth. If your stony sample is shown to contain quartz, it is definitely not a meteorite. If your stony sample also does not have a fusion crust, it is likely also not a meteorite. If you do find your sample has a glassy surface and flow lines, you might have a meteorite. There are some simple tests you can perform at home to determine if your specimen may be a meteorite or not. The first and easiest test you should do is the magnet test. All meteorites are magnetic, even stony ones. Iron meteorites will stick to a magnet easily, but some stony meteorites will not. 
To test a stony meteorite, you can hang a meteorite from a string and see if there is at least a slight attraction and pull to the specimen. If there is no magnetic attraction, you most likely do not have a meteorite. The next test is density. The density of your specimen can be determined by measuring how heavy it is versus its volume. This can be done by weighing it on a kitchen scale for its weight, then putting it onto a measured container like a beaker and seeing how much water is displaced for its volume. You then divide the weight by the volume. Metallic meteorites are dense and in the range of 7 to 8 grams per cubic centimeter. Stony meteorites are much less dense and are generally found in the range of 3 to 3.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Iron-bearing earth rocks generally may be in the middle around 4 to 5 grams per cubic centimeter. The streak test is the most useful for determining an iron sample. It can be done on many surfaces but recommended on a ceramic surface. You can simply scratch across the surface and see the type of trail it leaves. Red means hematite iron and black means magnetite iron, neither of which are found in meteorites. Meteorites generally do not leave any streak unless it has been on the planet's surface for a very long time and undergone significant weathering, but this is more likely to occur for stony meteorites. To prevent testing error in an extremely rare case you do have a meteorite, the test should be performed on a deeper interior part of the sample. Weathered meteorites may leave streaks from surface material changed over time, but the interior should not leave any streaks. The filing test is a last resort test that involves seeing the inside of the meteorite. Using a nail file, a small corner should be ground down until an area of the inside of the specimen is revealed. Meteorites will show reflective and shiny metallic flakes from various patterns formed on the inside. If there are no indication of metal particles, it is likely not a meteorite. If you have attempted any of these tests and your specimen has failed even one, it is most likely not a meteorite. Even if it has passed a couple of tests, statistically it is still very likely not a meteorite. If you would like to know for sure, there are many paid professional testing services that are available, such as meteoritetesting.org, which can determine with far greater accuracy. As said before, meteorites are one of the rarest geological finds one can make. On average, since the first recorded find in Michigan in 1883, there has only been one meteorite found in the state every 12 years or so. While it's not impossible to find one, many of the meteorites found in Michigan were found by mistake in someone's farm field, not by someone looking for one. Keep this in mind when considering if your sample is a meteorite or a meteor wrong. If you are interested in hearing more about the history and specifics of meteorite finds in Michigan, you can check out the Michigan Meteorites video on our channel, which goes on a deep dive of all 12 meteorites found in the state's history.